So this is an answer you can find in many books. So that, that mathematically re-expresses what we were saying before. Because if I now jack up my magnetic field, then the degeneracy increases. Right? If I also change, increase the area, the degeneracy increases. So the degeneracy depends on the size of the system and also on the, on the strength of the magnetic field. So that's an experimental tool in the hands of experimentalists that by changing the value of the B field, given a given sample, changing the value of B field, you can actually change the degeneracy. What is the physical meaning of that? Degeneracy means, suppose I have capital N number of electrons, total electrons, yeah. or the order of an Avogadro number, let's say. Okay? If that capital N is smaller than this degeneracy factor, that may happen with a very large system with a very strong magnetic field, then all the electrons will be in the nerve state. Okay? Right? But, if capital N is larger than eta, then some electrons, if eta number of electrons is larger than eta, then some electrons, if eta number of electrons will go into the ground state, the rest will have to be distributed. So therefore, by tuning the strength of the magnetic field, you can change what is called the filling factor, the number of uh, electrons that will fill the lower Landau levels. And that is the reason for why you see oscillations in diamagnetic susceptibility, which we'll discuss shortly. But let me take a pause and see if I have lost some of the students here. So h bar 2 pi will simply be h, so some textbooks also write it as e b k e a b over h c. And this is also related to the fine structure constant and magnetic flux, so you see signatures of quantum Hall physics coming in. Any question on the entropy? Because what is entropy? You have this famous Boltzmann formula. By the way, uh, such an uh, entropy is such a confusing thing that when Boseman wrote down his formula, nobody believed him. And in desperation, he was very frustrated. Many of us are sometimes. And he committed suicide. Boseman jumped off the Biramari coastal line in Italy, which was still under the Austrian Empire. So, what is the entropy? Entropy S is K Boltzmann times the log of the degeneracy. That's what quantum mechanics tells us. Okay. So it's log eta. And so now you get KB log of, you put that stuff in, KB over NHC, where N is the number of electrons per unit area plus log N. So, it's a, so therefore, even in the ground state, there is a lot of entropy. However, the entropy per particle, which is defined as S over N, will still go to zero. So that is, you divide by capital N, and you simply get KB divided by N times the stuff in the parenthesis. And uh, when you divide by N, even log N, like if n is like 10 to the 23, log n is only about 56. Right? This is 23 to log 2, right? And so, I mean log to the best e, and so therefore you get something like 56, which is a small number, and you divide by n, you will still get zero. So as in the limit of capital N going to infinity, the entropy per particle is still zero, which is nice because otherwise you'd have a violation of what's called the third law of thermodynamics. Right? The third law of thermodynamics says that entropy must monotonically go to zero as the temperature T goes to zero. So even if I do a zero temperature problem, I still have a degeneracy problem here. Okay? And there's an entropy. So, so this is all right. Third law is okay. Uh, so since people here also work on glassy systems. Uh, so we have, we have never seen this calculation before. Keep on asking yourself. Where does 
does quantum mechanics appear? Quantum mechanics appears in two distinct forms. One is that even if you don't worry about statistics, just the very fact that I have wave particle duality and therefore I cannot localize any particle. X and P do not commute. X and P do not commute. They, they, the commutator is IH bar. And because they don't commute, I have delta H, delta P less, you know, as this uncertainty principle, right? So therefore, I have quantization. So that's also quantum mechanics. So even if I have a single electron in a box, I still have quantized energy levels simply because of this wave particle duality. And that's where quantum mechanics is. And the other problem is, that like Dr. Mansal pointed out, that if you now increase the density of electrons or density of any fundamental particles, then uh, their average distance will become such soon that their wave functions will start overlapping. When the wave functions overlap, then you don't know which, because particles are all identical particles, which particle are you talking about? So for, so therefore you have now two kinds of fundamental particles. One kind we call fermions where the, the intrinsic spin, they're all spin half particles, like electrons. For, for solid state physics, fermions are therefore very, very important because you deal mostly with electronic properties, mostly with the properties of electrons. So they are fermions, and when I now have two electrons come together, they repel because of the pseudo pressure due to Pauli exclusion principle. One electron does not like another electron unless it has an opposite spin. And so that's the idea of bonding and antibonding that we talked about. Uh, so now, therefore, you have to have statistics into account. Because the argument that I have given here so far ignores statistics. So I simply use Boltzmann statistics, but use quantum mechanics. Of the Of the day. Right. So that's a very important point because the realistic system, so, uh, so therefore, when I will do the Landau diamagnetism, I'll still ignore statistics. Statistics does come in in a very important way, uh, but even without statistics, you can indicate the basic phenomena. So, so the calculation will be more clear. Right. So now that Dr. Mansal's question also is relevant. When can you ignore statistics? This is something that is also discussed maybe in, in, in one's book actually in great detail. What you have to do is to ask the question that, you see, what is the extent of the overlap of the wave function? That's given by the de Broglie wavelength, right? What is lambda equal to the Planck constant divided by the <laughs> momentum, correct? Lambda is h by p. But p is like the magnitude of p. So it's like square root of p squared. So p squared scales like the energy, and therefore, energy scales like kT, right? Right? So, uh, because of equipartial theorem, it's just a rough scaling argument, okay? So, one argument, therefore, is that when the interparticle distance, how do I calculate the interparticle distance? It's, see, I take the number of particles per unit volume, okay? invert it, and then take the one-third root of that. Because the volume scales like cube. So in order to get a length, I get V over N, not N over V. I have inverted it. V over N, cube root. That gives you a scale of interparticle distance. And when that interparticle distance is now com is comparable with the de Broglie wavelength, then quantum mechanics becomes very important. But I can still have a quantum mechanical system where I increase the temperature a bit and I find that the de Broglie wavelength has a temperature downstairs, a square root 2. If I increase the de Broglie wavelength decreases, so the, 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 then, then the wave functions become fuzzy and they don't overlap. Overlap will also be smaller if the mass which goes in the denominator of the de Broglie wavelength increases. That's why for electron, uh, it's a very large de Broglie wavelength. For proton, it's somewhat smaller. For carbon, for nitrogen, it's increasingly smaller. So 
you get more and more localized particles, and therefore you don't have to worry about quantum mechanics when you do statistics of, let's say, a gas of carbon atoms or gas of nitrogen atoms in a gas. Okay. So it's a question of relative magnitude also of the density as well as temperature, mass factors to make quantum mechanics important. So in any problem, sometimes you find that actually to see quantum effects, you have to go to ultra low temperature. That's why experimentally these are very challenging problems. You have to go to really ultra low temperatures, no defect, nothing. But in most of the time you see classical effects. I mean, to see a Harnock bomb oscillation is a very challenging experiment. I mean, you can see that the experiment, the phenomenon was predicted in 1959, and Tonomura, then Webb's experiments on IBM lab, they're in the 80s. Okay. So, uh, uh, in a sense, everybody knew that, that there's an integer Hall effect, right? It's, it's simply come from old quantum mechanics. But to see that effect, you had to wait until the 80s when von Klitzing actually demonstrated this in the laboratory. Okay? So, this is all just a review of this stuff. Everything that you, you have seen, but you're now seeing them maybe in the context of an, a quantized a charge particle motion. The thing that you should do is to write what is the Hel Helmholtz free energy. Because once you have the free energy, then you have everything in thermodynamics. So remember, free energy F is normally defined as U minus T. You have to be a little careful in your magnetic field. But in any case, the free energy is F is minus 1 over beta. I'm using a notation. Sometimes you have to be careful that I'm also talking to chemistry audience that beta is 1 over the Boltzmann constant and temperature. Okay. So 1 over beta minus 1 over the log of the partition function. And you can easily work out the partition function because we have, we have the Hamiltonian, just like harmonic oscillator calculation. Except that you have to put in the degeneracy because Remember, Z is trace into the power minus beta H. So trace in this case is simply sum over J, because the, the, what we have is minus beta J plus half H bar omega C, so it's sum over all J, but there's a degeneracy factor, because you have to remember this trace is over the states and not over the levels. The trace is over the quantum states. So you have to count for a given value of j how many quantum states are there. And that's precisely the degeneracy factor. It's just an accidental coincidence that for the Landau problem, it turns out that the degeneracy does not depend on the j value. But degeneracy may depend on j. For, for instance, uh, the Coulomb degeneracy for the hydrogen-like atoms, uh, the energy only goes like 1 over n squared. But ln degeneracy is there. Right? You have seen that, right? Because of spherical symmetry. But here you have to put in the degeneracy, and the degeneracy is precisely is eta that I have introduced before. So please work it out. When you work it out, it's a simple exercise that you get log of 2hc over eab. This is coming from the degeneracy factor, minus log of sinh sine hyperbolic half beta h bar omega c. And the internal energy U, U is as expected, this is precisely that of a two-dimensional harmonic oscillator. Okay? It's precisely that of two dimensions. So what is the specific heat C? Well, specific heat is more correctly called the heat capacity. Heat capacity at constant volume, I'm not worried about what happens to constant pressure. So C is defined as minus Kb times beta squared du d beta. And that has the typical structure, which is called Schottky anomaly sometimes in scholastic physics, half h bar omega c squared, cosec hyperbolic squared, half beta h bar omega c. So it has actually got a structure like this, it's called the Schottky problem. This is, this is also what you have in many other contexts. And then 
the most important thing for our purposes is the diamagnetism. Diamagnetism or magnetization is dia. We're not talking about para or ferro because we're not talking about spin of the electrons. It's simply the magnetism coming from the orbital motion of the electron. And M is defined as, again, I think I should not use the red. M is 1 over beta, del del beta, del del b log z. It's an identity because when you have z and you take dd beta, you pull down minus beta times the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to beta. So I think there's a minus sign. So when you do that, beta, beta, minus beta cancels out, and expectation value, oh, sorry, sorry, this is not there because M is defined as minus the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the magnetic field. It's exactly like what you, the way you define magnetic moment. Okay, it's the derivative of the energy with respect to the magnetic field. And when you work it out, means that you get eh bar over 2a, 2 over <coughs> beta h bar omega c minus cotangent hyperbolic half beta h bar omega c. This has an important message. This is actually the Landau diamagnetism ignoring the Fermi statistics that Bhattosh was talking about. So this is still without statistics, ignoring statistics. But this is the Landau formula of diamagnetism. Okay. Now this is actually a very, a very interesting expression. So, uh, so understood, right? We talk, we have, we have taken into account the non-commutativity of position momentum operators. We have, we have used quantization rules, but we are not worried about overlapping electronic wave functions. When can you do it? The old text, old books of statistical mechanics say that if you have non-degenerate electrons, in fact, in semicon some semiconductors you do have that. The non-degenerate case is the case where the de Broglie wavelengths do not overlap, so you can still use classical statistics. The other case where you have strong fermionic effects is called the degenerate electron gas. This is the old terminology in uh, books by Saha and Sevastov and others. They will do it. So this is a case, still case of non-degenerate electrons. But why is it so interesting? Because what happens as T becomes very large, then beta becomes very small, right? And you know what? That a quantum system, a quantum statistical system would start looking like a classical system as you increase the temperature to very large values. So what happens when beta becomes very small, that cotangent x, See, co cotangent x is actually sinh x, uh, sorry, cos x over, yes, is cos x over sinh x, right? It's a definition. And cos x is e to the x plus e to the minus x, and sinh x is e to the x, e to the minus x. To lower, so therefore, when x is small, cotangent x will go like 1 over x to leading order. So when temperature t is very high, you can replace the cotangent hyperbolic by its argument, one over the argument. And one of the, one of the argument is precisely this factor, and you have cancellation, right? It means that at very high temperature, the magnetization is identically equal to zero. And that's called the theorem, actually. It was a thesis of a student of Niels Bohr. Have you heard of this, the Van Leeuwen? It's called Bohr van Leeuwen theory. It's as old as 1922. Okay? And statistical mechanics. So here's a triumph of quantum mechanics when Landau in 1930s actually showed that you have to use quantum mechanics and you have to use quantized energy levels. And you do get a non zero answer. You have to have non zero answers because, you know, uh, elements like bismuth showed diamagnetism. See, normally diamagnetism.